Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I uh, would say it's safe to call this one of the crazier weeks we've had in quite some time. Uh, market's actually down here. I'm taping on Thursday, and believe me, it's uh, of no use to us to kind of look at where markets are right now while we're taping live, where the way markets have been moving. We, uh, we could be down 300 today. We could be up 300, more or less, all the above, all over the place. Uh, if you don't know, uh, markets were on Monday of this week uh, down throughout the day, several hundred points, got down as much as 700, and then all of a sudden almost instantly went down 1,600 points, which at the time made it the largest intraday point drop in the history of the Dow. Um, and then literally minutes later came back, was down 700, so it, it rallied back 900 points. Gave up another 400 by end of the day. Ended up being down 1,100 points on the day. Well, that's a lot of points. Pretty brutal day in the market. Uh, it was actually only the 108th worst day in market history. So it probably wouldn't even be on our radar if it weren't for the gravity of the point loss. But then on Tuesday morning, we opened down another 500 points. We closed the day up 500 points. You had a 1,000-point net change uh, with 29 different moments of moving back and forth between up and down. Wednesday, we were down 300, then up 300, then flat. And here we are Thursday, and, and uh, you know, not totally relevant, but, yeah, down 300 and all over the map. So... Uh, I have absolutely no interest right now in predicting exactly what will shake out today, tomorrow, next week. There's a significant amount of technical things driving markets, mismatch of bids and asks, buys and sells. Uh, there is, it's uh, way too complicated and kind of boring to get into it, but a lot of it is driven by uh, technical pressures around ETFs, around exchange traded notes, around those betting on the volatility. Um, but there's no normalcy in the market, and and that's part of the deal. It hasn't happened in a while. We had uh, some days like this in August of 2015. Uh, we had um, a whole period like this in August 2011, and we barely talk about it anymore. Of course, there was flash crash, for those of you who remember, May of uh, 2010, so we've lived through all this, and um, nobody likes it. We don't like it. We don't imagine clients like it. But I'll tell you what is really unlikable is people playing into it, people investing around these kind of moments of insanity we call panic attacks. Um, a correction is when the market goes down 10%. A bear market is when it goes down 20%. But dropping 2 3 4 5%, getting down as much as 6 7% sometimes, but really generally like that 2 to 5% space, very uncomfortable, it's noticeable, it's sizable, but when it happens very quickly, uh, we call it a panic attack. And, and as I wrote this week in our marketepicurean.com property, uh, where we did kind of a more extensive, deeper dive analysis, the history of market corrections, market adjustments, market moves, there have literally been now 60 such panic attacks 60 since the financial crisis okay we're only talking about the last nine years and of course you know that the market is up just multiples of itself from when the financial crisis was going on so these things are uh obnoxious and annoying and and perhaps uh anxiety inducing and totally immaterial and that's why i'm just going to focus the last couple of minutes of the video on the biggest point i closed out our dividendcafe.com written commentary this week with because I believe it's the most important thing I will ever say that is take advantage of this opportunity to truly ramp up your understanding both emotionally and even intellectually of risk because risk is not the risk of your portfolio going up and down in value the values moving and fluctuating that's not risk risk is the possibility of a failure to achieve a financial goal. So if your financial goal is that you need current income from your portfolio, that income is in no way, shape, or form jeopardized by what took place this week. You didn't have risk of financial failure to that goal from this volatility. If your goal 
is a future spend expenditure. You're investing towards your kids or grandkids college education or a future cash flow you may need, probably the most common investment objective, either current cash flow need or future cash flow need. If that is your goal, and when I say future cash flow need, we usually call it retirement, but those of us that can't bear the idea of stopping to work don't like using that word retirement. Listen, there's no way that the volatility of this week <clears throat> impacted or created risk for that future goal. So volatility is real. Volatility does carry the risk of potentially emotionally provoking someone to make a big mistake, but risk is the failure to achieve a financial goal. And that's not we experienced this week. And that delineation is very important. It could be important next week. It could be important next month. That lesson can't go away. I have to keep getting paid. I have to keep sitting here because I'm getting paid to tell you that. That's our goal. We have to tell you the truth. It's a deal we make with our clients. They are to trust us and we are to be trustworthy. And someone telling you the volatility will end tomorrow or someone telling you I have a solution that will get rid of all the volatility. They're lying to you. We're not going to lie to you. So I believe that we're doing the right thing for our clients and I think that we've handled this week well. We've nibbled around the edges with a little bit of equity buying where we thought we could very securely enter the market, get good pricing, execution, um, but uh, deploy some cash a little bit opportunistically to some distressed securities on a value basis. But overall, the, the right thing to do right now is to not really be paying attention. It takes a day or two or a week or two or whatever it takes to get the sanity back. On a fundamental basis, Treasury yields have moved higher. They've moved higher largely because of fear of inflation. Fear of inflation came about from pretty rapidly growing wages that were reflected in last Friday's jobs report. The government this week now announcing, we'll see how it plays out, a potential $300 billion additional spending bill. So greater deficits could lead to uh, greater fear of, um, of bond yields moving higher. And so those things have to get repriced into the system, repriced into investor uh, appetites and expectations. And all the technical nonsense has to get out of the way. And that's part of the investing world right now. Maybe it gets better in the future. But human nature won't change. Panic begets more panic, begets selling. You have to stay out of the way there. Okay? This is a big, big deal. Uh, we hope that, uh, that most of you understand it, but understand it better after listening to this video. Share this video with anyone you want. I think this message, uh, if you're a client of ours and you have friends that need to hear this message, and they're never going to be clients of ours, believe me, I don't care. This message needs to be distributed to the investing public because it's that important. That's what we care about. We don't need new clients. We do need people to hear this message. Share it all you like. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe. Reach out to us or anyone at the Bonson Group anytime with any questions you have about what's going on and why and what we're doing. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe.